get it. I get it. Good morning. And we got some more people coming in, and it's fantastic. Isn't it a great day? It's a great day to be in the house of the Lord, and I just love the fact that we are all works in progress. There's not one of us here who have it all figured out and who's perfect. Isn't it great to be with a bunch of imperfect people, including me? I love it. I love it. So welcome to First United Methodist of Seymour. And I applaud you for making God a priority today. Today is All Saints Day. It's one of my favorite days that we have. Actually, it was November 1st, but we celebrate it today. And we're going to be celebrating some of the people that have passed on in the last 12, years, 12 months. And um, they were all very significant to this church, so we're going to talk about that a little bit. And I hope that you enjoy it, too. That's why we got the candles here. Didn't Margaret do a good job of getting everything set up? I've been so busy with walk to Emmaus and said, could you set everything up? And she has more decorating skills than I do, so it's lovely. If you are a visitor, you will find in your pew, pew behind you, pew before you, someone will hand you a card if you need it. And there's also cards at the um, entrance. A welcome card. It looks like this or something like that. Please fill it out so we kind of know your name and who you are and we can kind of follow up with you if you want us to. If you don't want me to follow up with you, that's fine too. And there are also cards in there for prayer requests too. So if you have a prayer request, fill out that card and whenever we go back and um, process everything, we do start praying for those. So I wanted you to be aware of that. And if you're online, for all of our faith family who's online, you can either put it in the comments and let us know. Or you can just send us an email. Um, you can go to our website and send us an email. Or you can just call the church, too, and tell us your prayer request, and we'll be glad to um, do those also. Now, last, you know, last night, I returned from serving the Walk to Emmaus. And I know several people here have been to Walk to Emmaus. And um, I just love it. Uh, I hope we get to send some more this spring. I know I've got at least two people right now. And it's a great opportunity to grow in your faith, but you do it alongside other Christians. I, I think that's what I like the best about it. For three days, I did not have my phone. For three days, I didn't even have my Fitbit because I didn't know what time it was. Technically, I could have kept it because I was one of the spiritual directors. I took it off. I didn't want to know what time it was. Like when you get a potty break, this is get this long. We'll get a potty break. <laughs> but I love it because you're disconnected from the world. And you get to connect with all these, in my case, it was a women's walk. You get to connect with all these women. The men's walk was last week. And it really is a privilege. And I just want to tell you how much I appreciate that this church supports that. Several of you have been on that. Um, you support me going to Residence Encounter Christ in the jail and also do the um, walk to Emmaus. I know Dina was getting excited. She wanted to do a Residence Encounter Christ with me also. So... It's just such a pleasure, and I thank you so much for supporting me. The number one job as a pastor, everybody thinks our number one job as a pastor is to preach. It's not. <laughs> it's to equip and train disciple-making disciples. And Walk to Emmaus does that. So I really do love that. Um, and I hope several who's been there before will join me in the serving next time. Okay, folks so online. It's Holy Communion. Okay? So this is the time that you would get uh, juice, wine, water, whatever liquid you're going to use, and then also you know, a small piece of bread, crackers. Don't get a loaf of bread because afterwards, once we consecrate it, you have to use it differently and dispose of it. So I want you to bring um, those pieces with you. Go ahead and get them ready at this time. And at the end you will be the communion steward of your home. And I'll tell you what to do with those elements at the end that you didn't consume. So once again, only get what you think you're going to consume. Matter of fact, I was really proud of whoever put together the um, elements today. The chalice normally has a lot of liquid in it. It's much less because why waste it? So I really appreciate that they um, did that too. I think that's all I had on mine. So here's some other announcements. Margaret needs some help. Margaret, raise your hand. That's Margaret. A little higher. There's Margaret. Okay. After church, she needs some help moving tables so we can get everything ready for charge conference this afternoon, right? It's for charge, for charge conference this afternoon. There's certain people who have to come to charge conference to re represent the committees. 
I invite you to come. We're the host church. I love when we get to host. We don't have to drive far. They're going to talk about how they're going to do the redistricting of the districts. So you not only get to have worship, you get to be here with so many other people from other churches. You can get a few snacks. Um, you'll get to hear some of the programs that's going on. That we're, that's what the tables are for, to set up the different programs that some of the churches are doing. Um, but you also get to hear from Insuk what else happening, and you get to hear a short message from Insuk Peebles, Reverend Dr. Insuk Peebles, our um, conference superintendent. So please come. But Margaret needs help after church moving tables to get that ready. And we also have a note from Loris. I just love, love Loris. This is from Loris. A reminder that we will be packing the shoe boxes Wednesday, this Wednesday at 1 in the fellowship hall. Everyone is welcome to come help. Also today, November 3rd, is the deadline for monetary donations. Be sure to mark your checks or envelopes with shoe box on it. Okay? And there are boxes on the table outside the sanctuary doors. Go out the doors to the left. If you would like to pack your own, they should be returned by Sunday, November 17th. Thank you, thank you for all you do in this important mission project. And she's got a lot of boxes that we're going to be doing. So it's going to be really cool to see all those boxes together. So thank you for everybody who has donated so far, those who have already started packing boxes. Just thank you in general. Do appreciate you. So at this time, we kind of got through all the business, right? So now we get to worship. So at this time, I ask you to just kind of take a deep breath. Get comfortable in your seat. As the acolyte, we're going to have an acolyte. Oh, we're going to have two? Okay, are going to come and um, light the candles as Judy shares her gift on the organ doing the prelude.
us in prayer. We give thanks to you, O oh God, for all the saints who ever worshipped you, whether in rush arbors or cathedrals, whether in wooden churches or crumbling cement meeting houses. In any way, your name was lifted and adored. We give you thanks, O oh God, for hands lifted in praise, manicure hands and hands stained with grease or soil, strong hands and those gnarled with age, and holy hands used as daily offerings across the land. We thank you, God, for hard-working saints, whether hard-hatted or steel-booted, head dragged or apron, and blue-collar or three-piece suited. They left their mark on the earth for you, for us, for our children to come. Thank you, God, for the tremendous sacrifices made by those who have gone before us. Bless the memories of your saints, God. May we learn how to walk wisely in your examples of faith, dedication, worship, and love. In Jesus' name, we humbly pray. Amen. On All Saints Day, we celebrate those saints who have gone before us, especially those we have lost in the last 12 months. We've learned a great deal from these saints. How to love, how to be loving to those who are difficult to love, and how to love ourselves when we don't feel very lovable either. Some have taught us to give ourselves grace at times when we are too hard on ourselves. Some have taught us to let others bless you when you could use some help instead of trying to do it all on your own. And some have has taught us that Jesus has, had a sense of humor and still has a sense of humor if you take the time to look and see. And some of us have taught us some of them have taught us to be on fire for Jesus. Some of us have taught us, some of them have taught us how to love those who are difficult to love instead of simply pushing them away. And then some have taught us about spiritual practice that help us grow in our faith. So today we will say each name out loud to honor them thinking of how they taught us during the time we were gifted with them. We light a candle remembering the light they shined into the world in Jesus' name. We play a note with a chime indicating how their words were often music to our ears right when we needed it. So today we start with Mitza Durham. Mitza served in the women in faith, came to Bible studies, and she truly loved this faith family, even though we didn't get to see her much the last few years. Reverend Ed Mead. Ed was our adult Sunday school teacher, a preacher, a good friend, and our resident sage. He loved to share his musings in a way that only Ed could do. He answered the call in the ministry without any reluctance and served in all these churches for 20 years. And then when he came back to his home church to hear after he retired, he continued to serve instead of fading into the background, which he could have easily done. Ed loved worship. And those who have been here long enough know that Ed always lingered to the very last moment. He didn't want worship to end. So he would be the last person to leave the sanctuary. He didn't want it to end. And what a great example to follow and reverence Ed, me. Next is Dina Moore.
Dia was involved in this church in multiple capacities, including the women in faith. Wherever there was a need, Dina was ready to step in. She helped out in children's church. She helped out in the nursery. She was instrumental in getting her grandchildren to come to church. And there was nothing more than Dina ever wanted was to make sure that everyone in her family knew Jesus Christ and accepted them as their Lord and Savior, and she wanted other people to do that too. And she wanted to tell people, whether she was in a grocery store, in a waiting room, it didn't matter. She wanted to tell them about Jesus Christ. She was on fire for Jesus and did a great job as our lay leader. for tithes and offerings. Our God is ever faithful and provides everything that we need. Let us praise the Lord through our giving that our offerings may be acceptable to God. Would the ushers please come forward?
Dear God, we offer you these gifts that they might build up the work of your kingdom. Make us living witnesses to the way of your righteous reign. For the glory of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. See you again the Children's Church. Spirit, teach us through your word to follow after you. Speak, Lord. We, your servants, are listening. Amen. Amen. After the morning scripture from Psalms 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my long, all my life long. Do not put your trust in princesses, in the mortals in whom they, there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those who help in God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is to them, who keeps the faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry, the Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and widow. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, from all generations. Praise the Lord. In the Gospel of Mark. Mark 12, 28 to 34. Mark 12, 28 to 34. For those who want to follow in their own Bible, the scripture will be up on the screen too. <clears throat> I better get a drink of water. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another and seeing that he, Jesus by the way, answered them well, he asked him, what commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and beside him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. That is much more important 
than all the burnt offerings and sacrifice. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any question. The word of God for the people of God. You know, in the religious circles, there's a common story we hear. So I pulled these details from Ford.com to make sure I've got the details correct, because, you know, I always like to check it out, what the information I need to share. And you see, in the first century, there were two first century rabbis. First century means they were walking the earth about the same time Jesus was, okay? And Jesus probably knew them. Two first century rabbis. There was Hillel, the elder, and then there was also Shammai. They were often seen as men with opposing views. One rabbi was more liberal, one rabbi was more conservative. One day a, gentle, a Gentile came to both and asked a question. And he had the intent of just provoking him. He was just trying to stir the pot a little bit, okay? He asked to be taught the whole Torah, which is the first five books of the Bible, while he stood on one leg. He asked the rabbis, will you teach me the Torah, the entire Torah, while I stand on one leg? Well, first he went to Shammai. Shammai did not like that. And so he answers by angrily grabbing a rod and hitting him with it. He really just thought that was so ridiculous. Why are you wasting my time? Then he came to Hillel. Hillel, though, took a different approach to handling this. He agreed to do it. So the man stood on one leg, <coughs> and Hillel said, To which is hateful to you, do not do unto another. This is the whole Torah. The rest is commentary. Go and learn it. It is known as a silver rule in the Babylonian, Babylonian Talmud. You know, it's also known as Hillel's golden rule. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? But don't miss that second part. The rest is commentary. This means the rest of the Torah is about how to do that. That tells you how to do that. To not, to not do to someone else what you wouldn't want done to you. So the rabbi did teach him the Torah while he stood on one foot. And he took something that can be hard to understand and made the point, main point very, very clear. And that's what Jesus is doing here in Mark 12. And actually, this is my favorite version of the stories in Mark. Because in Mark, he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul and your mind, but he also adds your strength. That's great when you do it at Vacation Bible School. See all those kids go like that, you know? I always remember that so well. But his point was two things. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Once again, he's saying, and everything else is commentary to that. Everything else tells you how to do that. Sometimes someone will say the rest isn't important, but actually they weren't saying the rest is not important. They're just saying, if you focus there, the rest tells you how to do it. But we don't want to miss the other point that Jesus said in the scripture. The man who asked Jesus said, hey, I do all those things. He kind of gave him some examples. And then he said, you are not far from the kingdom of God. We have a tendency to make things harder than they really are, don't you? I know I do. I will sit there and try to get things just right and realize, what am I doing? It's fine. Move on. 
Jesus teaches that his yoke is light. We try to make it heavy, don't we? He teaches us to help those in need, but then we try to hoard what we do have like we won't have more later. And he tells us to love one another, but by golly, it sure is a whole lot easier to hate someone, isn't it? It's a whole lot easier to be angry at them and to bark at them than it is to try to love them. Because I tell you what, there's a lot of people out there hard to love, and I'm one of them. Ask Greg. <laughs> so, by the way, Greg's my husband, if you don't know. And he's back there. So today, when we celebrate All Saints Day, I want to thank what is the barriers we have. Sorry, Steph, I keep trying to move over so you can see me. But I want us to thank what is the barriers we have right now that keep us from loving one another. What are the barriers? Are we easily offended? Do we let the kingdom of this world and the politics of this world get in the way of loving one another? Are we unwilling to forgive and extend love to someone who has wronged us? Are we a perfectionist that doesn't have tolerance for those who don't have a need to do it perfectly? You know, those perfectionists really have a hard time with the free spirits, right? Do we struggle keeping our mouth shut instead of just being quiet when we are about to say something we know that will be hurtful to another? I want us to think about those barriers in our life right now that sometimes get in the way of us loving another. I want each of us to name something. Okay, so I'm, I'm actually going to give you just a few moments to think about this. Name something that gets in your way, that becomes a barrier in order for you to love your neighbor and whatever form your neighbor looks, believes, or anything like that. I'll give you a few moments. You got it? Hey, I'm seeing some heads nodding. So people have got their, their thing that they're, they're, they're thinking of right now. We're going to do this exercise today, together here in a very safe place. This is a safe place where you can think about this and process it. Because we need to identify our barriers. We need to know what they are. We need to call them out by name ourselves. Now I ask you, what barriers are there that have kept Jesus from loving you? Well, actually, there is nothing you can do, nothing you can do that will keep Jesus from loving you. Jesus taught that love, his love is unconditional, that his grace is free, you can't earn it. I used to love how Bishop Trimble used to say, I love you and there's not a darn thing you can do about it. So if we are given unconditional love and grace, why can't we extend that to others? We're given it. Why can't we extend it to others? As Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. It really is that simple if we try. Here we come again to those barriers that we named earlier. I hope that people online, I hope you are naming your barriers too, okay? Because you're going to need to have that in a minute. Those barriers are like something we need to prune out of our lives. Something we need to prune out of our lives. So today, as we prepare to celebrate Holy Communion, 
I invite each of us to ask Jesus, as you are preparing to come down to receive, I ask you, I invite you to ask Jesus to per prune whatever that barrier is that you've thought of. Prune it out of you. Cut it out of your life. Remove it. All of it. Now, I'm going to ask you to do one more thing, too. Because, you know, we have a tendency to ask God to remove something and we go pick it back up. Right? Am I right? Anybody else ever done that? Yeah, okay. I, I, so I figured I wasn't alone. So, I want you, before you come down to communion, in your mind, picture that you have grabbed what's just been pruned. Picture a branch, a vine, whatever works. Anything that you, like you sometimes go into your backyard and maybe you remove some brush. And you know, I've done that many times and have to remove brush and be cutting off the little trees or cutting off limbs that keep getting in my face when I'm trying to go through and mow. And I want you to grab them. And what do you do when you do it at home? Okay, when you're clearing out brush or you're pruning your grapevine or whatever, you grab them and you drag them behind you, am I right? And where do you take them? To the brush pile to be burned, right? A lot of times that fire's already started. And you just keep dragging and you keep throwing stuff on there. Picture that today. <clears throat> Picture that today. Because as you come down for Holy Communion, I want you to be dragging that. If you want, just even have your hand like this and drag it behind you, okay? And before you come and get the bread and the juice, Picture there's a fire here and there's a fire there. Throw it on the fire. What you have just asked Christ to cut out of you, to prune out of you, that barrier for you to love others, I want you to throw it on the fire. And then, I want you to come to receive the bread and juice of the one who loves you unconditionally. Helps you prune things out of you, but, you know, still loves you. Loved you before and loved you now. Grace is free. That hasn't changed. And yes, I'm trying not to light myself up there. I know the choir's sitting going, oh, please don't get much closer. But I want you to do that. I want you to throw it on the brush pile, and then I want you to come to the table and remember the man who put his life on the line because he unconditionally loved you so that you can love others. I want you to remember that. And may we hear as we drop that into the fire and we receive the elements, may we hear what that man heard in the scripture. You are not far from the kingdom of God. Amen. Christ the Lord invites us to his table 
all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. And in the United Methodist Church, everyone can come forward for communion. As long as you earnestly repent of your sin and seek to live in peace with one another and you love our Lord. That's the only requirement we have. We do not deny communion to people. Because communion is a means of grace. So therefore, let us confess our sin <coughs> before God and one another. Please join me in the unison prayer of confession. God of faith, the true to you. You have chosen the poor in the world, but we have dishonored them. You plead the cause of the afflicted, but we crush them. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have favored the rich and despised the poor. We have dismissed the needy with empty words and spoke ill of those who disagree with us. Soften our hearts and make straight our ways. Heal our hate-filled thoughts and turn us back to you. Put the spirit of Christ within us and cause us to grow into mature, faithful disciples of the one who came from you to save us from our sin. Forgive us that we may gain new life in you. Free us from the captivity to our anger and disgust. Bind us to the whole body of Christ, including the communion of saints, and let us bear witness to the truth that your love holds everything together in perfect unity. We pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now on that night in which Jesus was betrayed, he was in the upper room with his disciples. And during the meal, he took bread. He lifted it up and gave thanks to it. And then he did. <coughs> Telling them, this is my body given for you. Each time you eat of it, do this and remembrance of me. And at the end of the meal, he once again lifted up the cup, because by then they've already had several cups. So once again he lifts up the cup, and he said, this is the blood of the new covenant. My blood shed for you for the forgiveness of many each of you drink from it and do this in remembrance of me. Pour out 
your Holy Spirit gathered here. And on these gifts of bread and juice, make them be for us the holy and the body and blood of Christ. Make them the holy, Lord. And may they be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to the world until Christ comes again in that final victory and we feast at the heavenly banquet together. Now this is how we will be doing communion. We do it with minimal contact. You will come forward in the outer aisles. And we will have two serving stations. A piece of bread will be handed to you and you're invited to select a cup of juice out of the tray. Then you receive the bread and juice. You don't need to hold it. Go ahead and receive the bread and receive the juice. And as you exit, you'll see two bowls where you'll be able to put the little plastic cups that have the um, juice in them in. If you wish, you can stop and pray at the altar. And remember, as you're coming down that aisle, drag, drag what got pruned out, throw it in the fire, and then come and receive. Remember, this is an outward sign of an inward grace. I ask you to soak it in. Stop and be at all what is happening at that time. Then you can return to your seat using the inner aisles. If you're upstairs, you're welcome to come down and join us, or they will, servers will come up to you, because they're going to come up to Kathy anyway, aren't they, Kathy? Will the servers please come forward? Three wafers. Both of them. Do you want me to take another one? Because you're going to be handing these to I'll take another one. I'll be in there. Okay? You can do it? Okay. The table has been set. As after the servers get in place, come down and receive. When they finish, we'd like you to come up and help me, okay? Now they start bringing it back. Thank you very much.
So you need to do something that we normally do here with the elements. What elements you have not consumed needs to go back to nature. So if you have it, whatever liquid you use, you need to go outside and just pour it gently into the grass. And whatever bread, crackers, or ha whatever you have left over, same thing. Take it outside and just put it back in nature. Because it has been consecrated, it's been set apart. It's not to be used in another way at this time. Eternal God, we give thanks for this holy mystery that you have given us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others and to follow you wherever you lead us, even in those scary and dark places. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now as the acolytes come to take the light of Christ back out into the world, we will follow them taking the light of Christ out in the world. Let's join our voices together in the closing hymn. Sunday. Jesus gave us the greatest of the commandments. Go loving God with all your being and love one another. In doing so, love can overcome hate and replace it with love. Go in peace and go in love. Amen.